Welcome everyone uh, to the uh, ninth season of our masterclass series in partnership with Miami-Dade County Mayor Daniela Levine Cava. Uh, we are going to be focusing this season on AI again, uh, and very excited to be to share some really exciting news about two national awards that we won for these series of masterclasses now in their ninth season, more than 40 masterclasses. Uh, we were recognized uh, as a business of the year by the American Business Awards. And we also just last night got a platinum award from PR News. Um, we'll find out if we're the actual winner in our category. We're going up against McDonald's. Um, so we're really excited uh, about the, the service that we've been able to provide and the partnership with the mayor's office. Um, Today, you're going to be part of a live update uh, of that, the course that we built uh, with the amazing uh, Joe Apfelbaum uh, from Ajax Union. Uh, this idea of doing kind of live course creation actually comes from my background, having worked at NPR, and we used to make live radio and then broadcast it later. And so there's just a vitality uh, and, and a vividness that comes with live that uh, just can't be matched. Um, just as a reminder, um, there's a chat uh, and then there's a Q&A. And the chat is really used uh, to share resources or react to prompts. Uh, the Q&A uh, is, is for you to ask questions that I can then uh, curate and bring to, to Joe. And Joe will also be dipping into the Q&A periodically and answering questions there as well. Um, we also will be running some polls uh, and uh, you can answer the polls, they'll come up as a pop-up. Uh, today's session is AI for LinkedIn. Uh, we're gonna be doing a session on fact-checking and how to counteract the tendency of AI to make stuff up uh, in two weeks on Wednesday the 6th. And on Wednesday, September 20th, uh, we're gonna be talking about case studies of how AI is being used in business today. Um, and we are right now in search of case studies, and I would invite you guys uh, in the Q&A, I mean, in the chat, to please share uh, how have you, over the last several months, used AI tools to turbocharge uh, a marketing or sales campaign? How have you used AI in your business to accelerate marketing or sales? Please share um, any examples that you've used from your business, and we're going to pluck from these examples and feature them uh, in about a month's time so that you can get expired by your peers. And I'll, I'll give you an example. This is a non-business example, but one that I find super inspirational, uh, just to kind of give you a sense of the kinds uh, of things that your peers uh, are doing as they experiment and learn with these tools. So uh, we had Farhan Chawla from Pakistan, uh, where he's part of the Entrepreneurs Organization, an organiza a business uh, owner organization that I'm a part of. And he and his seven-year-old created The Adventures of Billy Bakken's, uh, a loosely uh, derived Harry Potter retelling uh, featuring a goat. Uh, and what's incredible about it is it's a book with illustrations and then a narration all created by AI. Um, and Farhan did this with his seven-year-old and um, he wrote a beautiful uh post in Medium about the process of creating it. He shared his uh, chats uh, that he used in chat, the, the prompts he used in ChatGPT to create this. And, and I love this example. Uh, this is just a beautiful example of where a nice place to get started. One of the very first things that I did in AI was uh, telling interactive bedtime stories with my four-year-old son. Um, where he would tell me who the characters were and then AI would generate a story about them. And, you know, Henry's milky adventure with Sophia and Alexander H. from his pre-K class. Um, and it's a, it's a kind of a low stakes, fun way to get started with these tools. A lot of folks in the feedback that we've been getting feel sometimes a little intimidated by these tools. I completely understand. It can be a bit overwhelming. Um, and so the fact that, um, you know, you can do this in a, in a safe environment um, and then this also can stop business owners from terrorizing their employees by saying, use AI uh, without actually really understanding how AI works. And so um, love this example from Farhan. We'll dig into it in a couple of weeks. And thank you guys for sharing um, some of your uh, examples of how you've used it in your business. For those of you who have shared uh, what you've done 
I'd actually like you to go ahead and follow up now and say, what outcome did you get? What we're really looking for are case studies of folks who've had concrete outcomes, uh, revenue generated or time saved uh, through the use uh, of AI. Um, I'm gonna quickly launch a, just a very quickly quick poll. Um, we have, um, uh, we wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about what to expect from us uh, during these sessions, especially those of you who are new. Um, on Monday, by Monday, you'll get a follow-up email where we'll post a, a free access recording uh, of this, uh, and you'll have access to that in case you want to share it with your team. Um, and then we will um, also, you know, incorporate some of these lessons into our course. Uh, we uh, will be taking the references resources from the chat. Um, and bringing them into a resource document that we'll share with you. So any resources that you wanted to share with us, we can incorporate. We'll also um, address your questions in the Q&A, uh, get more information from you in our polls. And, and then on Monday, uh, and a lot of you always ask about this, can we get access to a recording? Uh, yes, on Monday, you'll have an access to a link to the recording, but also a recap of what we talked about uh, we're going to be holding an info session this week. A lot of folks ask, you know, how can we work with you uh, to, you know, how can BizHack help us uh, use AI to grow faster? The, the number one question that we've been getting is implementation support. How do we actually use this? Uh, and that's really, you'll learn more about how BizHack does that uh, during the info session. We have a couple of different offerings. Basically, they bucket into part-time outsourced head of marketing or fractional CMO services. This is where we basically run your marketing department. We also do coaching and training. Um, what we'd like from you is just your participation. Uh, come to the live sessions, uh, be a part of the co-creation of this material, be active in the chat, respond to questions in the Q&A, leave us a review, spread the word to friends. Uh, you know, we really welcome you sharing this with others uh, across the world. Um, attend the info sessions to learn more about how we can work together um, and connect on LinkedIn and, and follow us on social media. Um, one of the traditions that we have is a thank you gift. And, um, you know, Joe is, uh, first of all, thank you, Joe, for coming here today, for sharing your expertise, your knowledge. Um, but also, um, Joe is an extraordinary um, trainer and thought leader when it comes to using AI for business development. And um, he has developed one of the best courses there is uh, in AI tools for business development, a course uh, that he sells for $499, uh, 10 modules, 29 videos. And it's really about raising your AI game. Um, you're going to see just the extraordinary quality that Joe brings to the table. And he's offered one of these courses uh, to as a raffle prize to those of you who've come here today. So we'll announce the raffle winner at the end of the session uh, in about 90 minutes. And thank you, Joe, for coming today, uh, sharing your expertise. And thank you for, you know, all you do, like you and I are kindred spirits. We are out there in the world sharing our knowledge with I think a really pure desire to just see folks grow and, and develop. And, and so thank you. Thank you for being here today, sharing your expertise, and thank you for the work that you do. I did want to acknowledge our sponsor, uh, the Office of the Mayor, Daniela Levine Cava, and her Future Ready Initiative, uh, and my partner, Danilo Vargas, the Small Business Innovation Manager from Miami County uh, Strive 305. We also have a media partner in South Florida PBS. I have a background having worked for PBS and NPR and uh, really honored that uh, they are our media partner. And we have a number of community partners who've helped spread the word to their uh, communities about uh, this work that we're doing. So let's get going. And uh, thanks everybody for, for coming today. Uh, I know we're just a few days away from the start of school, uh, one day away in fact, so appreciate your time. So this is bonus unit eight in AI for marketing and sales, AI for LinkedIn with guest instructor, Joe Apfelbaum. Uh, as a reminder, this course is really about five things. It's about giving you the context, the skills, the tools uh, to utilize AI in your business and helping you uh, overcome the challenges that are inherent in AI 
and get inspired by your peers and by other businesses and how these tools can transform your business. Uh, the course is really intended for two folks, the owners of small businesses, the business leaders, uh, you know, companies anywhere from, uh, you know, a mom and pop or a solopreneur all the way to a $50 million company. Uh, and then the marketing doer, uh, the folks who are actually going to implement this daily to improve their quality and efficiency and allow them to do more better. Um, this is uh, a bonus unit eight, specifically looking at AI uh, for business development on LinkedIn. Um, and our goal today is to um, help you understand the context of LinkedIn and AI. Uh, LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft, a company, uh, and, it, and LinkedIn and Microsoft is very close ties with ChatGPT's maker, OpenAI. And so understanding that broader context, what is LinkedIn useful for, for business owners. Um, we're going to also talk about the risks uh, of not complying with LinkedIn's terms of services and how you can safeguard yourself because um, LinkedIn can be pretty uh, punishing uh, if they feel you violated their terms of service and it can shut down your account if you're not uh, careful. And Joe's going to definitely address how to be careful with LinkedIn as you use these approaches and tools. Um, we're going to learn AI-enabled techniques for automated sequences, posts, recommendations, DMs, all the things that you should do to create relationships on uh, LinkedIn can be leveraged. We can leverage AI to do it. And in fact, uh, Joe and his company have built a tool, uh, a plugin for Chrome to actually do that faster. And he's going to demo that powerful tool and share with you today how you can download it and use it for your own company. He's also going to talk about other third-party tools uh, that you can use. And finally, we're gonna touch briefly on LinkedIn's potential for recruiting. Uh, some of the most advanced uses of AI currently in, in, that are native to the LinkedIn platform uh, are, are for recruiting. Uh, obviously, um, we're focused more on the marketing and sales component, but we wanna acknowledge that when we're talking about LinkedIn as a platform. So, Every session, we uh, ask you guys questions about your use uh, of AI. And I can't tell you how powerful this data is. We've been sharing it with um, you know, the county, with media organizations. Um, your use of AI, uh, the, this, the set of poll data that we're collecting uh, as we ask these questions uh, is one of the largest and most robust there is. And we really appreciate your uh, responses. And one of the things, and, and you have uh, every reason to be really proud of this, um, the amount of usage uh, of uh, AI in business among the folks who attend these webinars uh, is nearly, is over 95% by the end of the uh, first season of masterclasses. That's compared to a national average of 11%. And so the speed of adoption and your usage of AI is truly inspiring, it's trend setting, and it shows how just having these inspiring masterclasses uh, where we introduce you to the tools and experts who teach you how to use them can have a, a dramatic increase uh, in, the in the usage of it. 91% um, of you reported uh, by the end of our last season that you um, were using AI in your business. That was compared to about 67% when we started and the national average for small businesses of 11%, according to a GoDaddy survey. And even more exciting to me is that um, we saw an increase uh, in by 14 percentage points uh, of the number of you who reported saving or making money using AI. This is, you know, the most important question to us is, are you using AI? to save uh, resources or to make more revenue. And today's session around business development is 100% about helping you uh, make more money using AI. Um, and we heard some really great um, feedback and comments about um, how these masterclasses help, have helped you uh, understand some of the nuances and complexities of these tools, um, normalize their use, make you realize that, you know, your yes, you're not behind, this is brand new, um, and uh, you can do this too. And um, also, you know, we put a real emphasis in bringing in a diverse set of experts uh, and leveraging those experts 
Um, and uh, really appreciate what Aria Hill had to say about that, about um, not being afraid to address some of the um, you know, bias issues that come up uh, within AI, particularly facial recognition, but um, you know, all of these tools, you know, that's a perspective that we've been focused, uh, put some focus on and, and get your, your appreciation about it. I want to talk to you now about a quick introduction to AI for LinkedIn. Uh, first, um, I, want to, I want to start by saying uh, welcome to, to Joe uh, Affelbaum, the founder and CEO of Ajax Union, uh, a B2B digital marketing agency in Brooklyn. Uh, he is uh, a business strategist, a LinkedIn expert, and a certified Google trainer uh, who, like me, has trained uh, more than 10,000 companies. He's also uh, the author of five books. Uh, the founder of Evergreen Networking and the creator of the uh, EVAI app to facilitate networking uh, on LinkedIn. You're going to learn a lot about Joe and his app. Um, and he's a member of the National Speakers Association and a phenomenal uh, speaker. I've seen him speak. Uh, we did a LinkedIn Live this week. So, Joe, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really excited to be here. And thank you for all of you in the comments. You're so engaged. I really love seeing the comments float up and I see people are already sharing their LinkedIn URLs in the chat. So feel free to connect with each other. I'm excited about this information because a lot of people use LinkedIn, but not many people have the time to use it properly. And with AI, you're going to save a lot of time. So I'm really excited about this topic, Dan. Absolutely, and I'm excited to have you here. So let's let's take a few minutes and just talk through the context uh, of AI for LinkedIn. It, it's not as widely known as as we might think, and for those of us who are in the field, uh, I think we often forget to just kind of do a level setting of understanding. So first of all, Joe, LinkedIn is the world's largest professional social network, right? I just uh, searched on Google yesterday. I said, how many users are there on Facebook? And Facebook currently has 3 billion users. LinkedIn has yet to reach a billion users. They're at 930 million users. That's a lot of people. They're going to be hitting a billion very quickly because they're growing at a rate of three new members every second. LinkedIn is a fast-growing professional social network that has more millionaires than any other platform. So when I teach LinkedIn, I'm teaching people a platform that can generate revenue. 80% of B2B leads that come from social media come from LinkedIn. So if you are serious about getting leads, if you are serious about networking, LinkedIn is the platform where the people have the most money, there are the most professionals there, and you can also get the most organic attention right now because when you post something on Facebook, you might get 15 people to see it. But on LinkedIn, my average posts get over a thousand views, which, and some uh, posts have gotten over a million views. So mm -hmm. LinkedIn is a very powerful platform. And, you know, it was started out as an independent coffee uh, company co founded by Reed Hoffman, but it was acquired by Microsoft. And we, we have seen just at, over the last several years, uh, as Microsoft engineers kind of built their tender hooks into this platform, we have seen like daily updates and, 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 and upgrades in the technology. And um, BizHack actually has an entire course uh, pre-chat GPT about LinkedIn. And it was incredible. We would um, share our screen and it would look different from the day before. The The speed with which uh, the updates were happening uh, were very similar once Microsoft owned it to what you saw at Facebook. Uh, the difference though between Facebook and LinkedIn, and I think this is a really important distinction, is while Facebook made its North Star growth at the maximum speed at all costs, and we've seen those costs pretty vividly in terms of some of the negative outcomes of Facebook uh, growing too quickly and not having the right controls in place. LinkedIn has not grown as quickly with intention. And it really has tried to preserve itself as a better space for networking and conversation. Now, it can get a little spammy, right? And we all are getting unsolicited messages, uh, you know, from salespeople. But I can tell you, uh, you know, LinkedIn has not been attributed to coups. You know, LinkedIn uh, has generally been more ca cautious. 
more business minded and more long term focused and responsible, in my opinion, in terms of curating uh, a valuable network that actually has consequences, because if they think you're breaking their terms of service, they won't blink an eye and kicking you off. So, Joe, talk a little bit about how this is a more. Yes, it's almost a billion users, um, which is still one third the size of Facebook, but it's a perhaps a higher quality community uh, in terms of the experience of being in there every day. There are more millionaires on LinkedIn than any other platform. And the difference between, I would say, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter is, let's say, for example, I use Instagram all the time. You can find me at Joe Applebaum on Instagram. I'm curious to know who uses Instagram. Feel free to put your Instagram handle, too, in the chat so people can follow each other. But when you're on Instagram, you see somebody's handle. You don't see necessarily their name. Right. People put their handle. People put their Twitter handle. People on Facebook, they don't really share a lot of information. But on LinkedIn, people share their first name, their last name, their company name, where they work, where they work before, where they went to school, who their mutual connections are, all their activity. There's a lot of transparency when it comes to using LinkedIn. And this is why Microsoft paid twenty six point two billion dollars to buy LinkedIn back in 2015, 2016. The reason they did that is because they knew that LinkedIn was different. LinkedIn is business. When you're on Facebook, you're there to have fun. You're there to meet your friends, your family, all the things related to the F. But on LinkedIn, it's all related to professional. It's all related to business. It's all related to networking and relationship building. So the context and the mindset of a professional and a an user on LinkedIn, they're there to build relationships, and they're more open for you to hit them up. When you slide into somebody's DM on Instagram, they think you want to date them. That's why it's called sliding into the DM. But on LinkedIn, if I go into your DM on LinkedIn, I don't want to date you. I want to buy your services, or I want to offer you access to my network, or I want to invite you to an event, or I want to give you an opportunity. That's what LinkedIn's about, and people know that. Yeah, sure, you're going to get spam everywhere. I get tons of spam on Instagram. Tons of spam on email and tons of spam on LinkedIn. Now they're doing LinkedIn verification. You may have gotten a notification to verify your LinkedIn with the clear feature. If you go to linkedin.com slash verify, you can actually verify your LinkedIn account. But if you're using any tools, the first thing I tell everybody is back up your LinkedIn account. And LinkedIn has the ability for you to be able to pull all your data off LinkedIn and back it up. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a sec. So just quickly to give you a little bit more additional context and a little bit of a guide of where to get started as you think about this, LinkedIn is the world's most important recruiting tool. Um, and a, a large, large part of its revenue is generated through its recruiting services. It competes with a whole set of folks uh, you know, uh, in the recruiting space. And that space has been really transformed by AI in the last years. You know, things based such as um, sifting, using AI to sift through with stacks of resumes, um, using AI to generate job descriptions. And the Microsoft has chosen that its first implementations of AI uh, uh, are primarily in the recruiting space. So a lot of what Joe is going to show you today uh, for the marketing and sales leverages third-party tools like his own, EVAI, uh, ChatGPT, et cetera, and then kind of almost like either integrates them or cuts and pastes them into uh, the, the LinkedIn environment. My prediction is that these tools will eventually become native to LinkedIn. In other words, LinkedIn will begin integrating uh, as it has already done for a lot of uh, recruiting functions, um, a lot of these composition and creative tools that, that Joe's gonna share with us today. Um, what we're already seeing that uh, in uh, Microsoft 365 through Copilot and through Bing AI. And so you can kind of see what's coming when you go to Bing uh, AI and you search and you see the uh, AI generated content integrated in the search results, that kind of thing, uh, that kind of seamless integration is coming to LinkedIn, but it's not here yet. So for now, uh, there's a little bit of a two-step process in leveraging AI for marketing and sales. So, so Joe, talk about... Um, you know, the more you give, the more you get in terms of high quality responses that, you know, AI is trained on generic information from the internet. 
And in order for it to be useful, you need to give it information about you and your company. You see, all the artificial intelligence tools that are out there, they don't necessarily know who you are. You don't put in personal personal information into the AI. Now you can actually train ChatGPT with information about your business, and it will know who you are every single time. But anytime you're opening up a new chat, whether it's Google Bard or Claude or ChatGPT or Perplexity or Pi.ai or any of the apps that you're using, you need to start training the app to tell it about you and your business, to tell it about your target market, to tell it about your customer, your ideal customer's pains, your ideal customer's goals. You have to tell it how you help people. You have to tell it about your hobbies, your experience, and even create a Q&A session that you can copy and paste into the AI with all the popular questions that people ask you about yourself and your business. That will help you be able to train the AI. And finally, telling the AI what your tone sounds like and what your goal is and what you're trying to accomplish will also help it be able to create even more personalized information. AI is really, really smart, but it's only as smart as the person that's using it. If the prompts that you're giving it are foolish, it's going to produce foolish results. And a lot of people have tried to use artificial intelligence haven't used it effectively because they haven't taken the biz hack courses, they haven't taken our courses, and they don't know how to be able to use the AI. And so they're not getting the benefit and they end up quitting. Instead of quitting, what I want you to do is I want you to learn how to leverage it in the proper way by customizing it and preparing this information in advance. Beautiful. Thank you. A um, couple of quick housekeeping items. Number one, um, love that you guys are sharing your. Uh, LinkedIn profiles in the chat. Uh, please continue doing that. Um, we're going to uh, collect all those LinkedIn and share them in the Monday recap email. So you guys have access to those uh, and you can connect with each other. You don't have to do it while you're on this call. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, please go ahead and put your LinkedIn in there. Second, um, uh, about two thirds of you have filled out this the poll. Uh, for those of you who haven't, I'm going to close it here in a few minutes. So please uh, let us know how you're using AI in your business. You should have a pop up with the poll. It'll take you just a second to answer. And we really love getting that data. Thanks uh, for doing that. All right. Really critical that when you get started, uh, before you really get started using AI in a robust way on LinkedIn, and frankly, before you use AI for sales and marketing in a robust way, back up your account. Joe? The reason why you need to back up your account is because if you don't back up your account and LinkedIn restricts you, you lose your connections, you lose your posts, you lose your articles, you lose your messages, you lose all the information on your profile. So if you go to linkedin.com slash my preferences slash D slash download dash my data, you can easily be able to download your stuff. Now, my question to you guys is, when was the last time you backed up your connections? Even just backing up your connections, when was the last time you did this? Last month, last year, never, can't remember. If you haven't ever done this, take a moment in your notes to write down backup LinkedIn. And you could just hover over the me button on LinkedIn. You can only do this on the desktop version of LinkedIn. 58% of people are using LinkedIn from their mobile phone. So if you're the type of person that doesn't ever go on the desktop, this is one reason to go on a regular Chrome desktop Hot log in, click on me, click on settings, click on data privacy on the left, and then click on get a copy of my data, click on connections, press download. And within 15 minutes, you're going to be able to have a zip file with a CSV file that has the first name, the last name, the company name, the, the, uh, the position of each person and when you last connected to them, all in a beautiful spreadsheet. We teach our students how to take that spreadsheet and put it into other tools to be able to fill all that data up with email address and other information. LinkedIn used to give everyone's email out, but they stopped giving it out. They only give some emails out now, but I highly recommend you go ahead and you back up at least your connections so that you don't lose your account if somebody hacks you or if LinkedIn cancels your account for any reason. LinkedIn can cancel your account for literally any reason. They don't have to give you a reason. That's part of their terms and conditions. So make sure to back up your account. How often do you back up your account, Joe? 
Personally, I back up all my connections every month, but you should at least back up your full account once a year so that at least you have your account because not everyone's as active as I am. I'm extremely active. I'm posting many, many posts. I posted over 5,000 times on LinkedIn. I posted actually, while I was while you were talking, I actually posted something on LinkedIn. So what I recommend you do is depending on your activity, at least back up once a year. But if you're a very active user, you might want to back up quarterly or monthly. Love it. Great advice. So we're going to now get into the meat of how to use LinkedIn. Uh, and we're going to start with automated sequences. So let's just start with a quick definition, Joe. What is an automated sequence? So let's say, for example, I have a new LinkedIn connection and I want to send them a thank you email. I want to send them an email saying, hey, thank you so much for connecting with me on LinkedIn. I want to send you a series of emails about me and about my business and kind of just let you know what I'm up to. There are, is an automation tool that you can use that sits on top of LinkedIn where you can easily segment the person you just connected to and you just connected with, and you can add them to an automation. And the great thing about this tool is that it allows you to use artificial intelligence to fill in the information in the automation. The tool is called Apollo.ai and um, Apollo.io, I should say. But Apollo is a really, really great tool because it has integrated artificial intelligence into it, and it has a Chrome extension that sits on top of LinkedIn. And I can actually show you how I've added some of you to uh, to my LinkedIn. So I, I can just quickly sh um, open up my uh, my account over here, and I'll show you how I literally just saved somebody. I'm going to share my screen right now and just kind of show you. So for example, I see Elizabeth was the first person that um, that put her LinkedIn URL in the chat. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for putting uh, your LinkedIn URL in the chat. And as you can see on the right corner here, there's a little tab. This is the Apollo tab. So when I click on that tab, I can add her to a group, to a list. You see, I added her to BizHack LinkedIn event. So I added her to this list and I added many of you to this list as well. Now what I can do is I can click on the sequence button here and add her to a particular email sequence that is AI driven. So what I want you guys to do is first download the Apollo.io app and start using it because it'll give you everyone's email. So for example, I have um, Elizabeth's email right over here. So if I hover over her email and I click on this little email box, there are templates that I created using ChatGPT, like for example, my Evie AI intro email. So Elizabeth, I don't know if I have permission to send you this email, but let me know in the chat if I can send you this email. And if she writes yes in the, in the chat, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit send right here. And even without me being connected to her on LinkedIn, I can actually send her this email and I can choose multiple email addresses. Now this, this email was generated by ChatGPT. I didn't actually generate this email. I saved it as a template because I fed ChatGPT information about my AI tool and I explained it to what it does. And ChatGPT wrote up this whole email, saved it as a template. And now I have a series of templates that I can use and a series of sequences that this tool is using. And again, I used AI to create it. And then um, I use this tool to kind of see everything that's going on. So Elizabeth says, um, I have an update on my email address though. So I'm gonna copy and paste the updated email address over here because she just gave me her new email. I'm going to click on CC and I'm going to paste her email over here. And now I'm going to press send. And now she's going to get it to both email addresses. And boom, there you go. If I want to update the email, it's really simple. I just click on the little pencil over here and I paste her new email in and I press save. And now it gets saved inside my Apollo. That contact gets saved. So as you can see, it's relatively easy to use these tools once you know how to use these tools. And we have several hours of training inside our program that teaches people how to use Apollo, but you don't have to learn every aspect of Apollo. You can download it for free right now, let it sit on top of your LinkedIn and let it start giving you the ability to send email sequences to your LinkedIn connections using artificial intelligence. So, we talked about automated sequences. We're now going to go into um, generating topic ideas. Now, one of the most powerful uses of generative AI is as the 
rough draft or the starting point for Nemo. Now, I know Joe uh, had said that in that he basically had ChatGPT draft that email. Um, I guarantee you that he reviewed it, he edited it, he tweaked it, he personalized it, he made sure that it was in his voice. So it wasn't a full cut and copy, but it was, uh, you know, the 80% version. And this is uh, another area where this, we always advocate this combination of your unique human intelligence with the artificial intelligence uh, that is, you know, more powerful and faster than any human being ever could be. And there's no better example uh, of where this is, is in generating topic ideas. So you can use AI to give you ideas and then you as the you know, person who knows your audience, person who knows your business can then pick which ones of those are most aligned with your strategy, with your personal values, with your preferences. Uh, so Joe, talk a little bit about the tools that you can use to generate ideas. So when it comes to brainstorming with artificial intelligence, if you just say brainstorm ideas for my business, the AI doesn't know who you are. It doesn't know anything about you. So the first thing you have to do is you have to give it information about your business. So earlier on, we talked about the types of information that you need to give it. But right over here, if you take a look at the prompt on the left side of the screen, I specifically tell it to act as, and this is a role that it takes on, act as a brainstorming bot and give me 17 topic ideas for Joe Applebaum to post about on LinkedIn. Okay, so I'm giving it very specific information about how many topic ideas and who the topic should be about and where I want to post it. Do you see? I'm not just saying, just give me 17 topic ideas for Joe Applebaum or give me topics for Joe Applebaum. It's going to do whatever it wants. I want to try to control the output as much as possible. And then I say, make the topics interesting for his target audience. And then I specify who my target audience is. CEOs, entrepreneurs, business owners who want to leverage LinkedIn to grow their business. Include items related to the topics of artificial intelligence, marketing, sales, personal development. Each topic should include something from Joe's experience and be able to tie it into one of his three businesses. Now, AI doesn't know what my three businesses are. So I had to previously inform AI everything about me, my three businesses, what I do, how I do it, who my target market is, information about my experience. And I think if we go to the next slide, we might even have an example. Um, actually, we, we, I didn't have the example, but I can show you guys the example of how what I actually gave the AI in order to produce those topics. Should I share my screen and show you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. So let me let me actually show you because I saved it in a, in a Word document over here. So can you guys see my screen? Okay, cool. So now I'm back to Elizabeth's screen. Somebody said, uh, Joe, are you guys going to spam Elizabeth? I'm not using AI to spam anybody. I don't recommend spamming. That's why I specifically asked Elizabeth permission before I sent her the email. Often when you're connecting with someone on LinkedIn, you can ask them, hey, can I send you a sequence of emails about what I do or whatever? And often they'll say yes, and then you can hit the sequence button and just do it. I want to recommend just randomly using AI to just spam people for no reason. There has to be a reason why you want to be able to email them. Often they'll ask about your products and services. You can then add them to a sequence. But here's the profile that I created for myself, and I actually just had ChatGPT interview me. I told ChatGPT to ask me a series of questions, and then I used a tool like otter.ai, which I'm actually using right now in real time, and it's typing in every single thing that I'm saying. So I use a transcription tool to type up everything that I said, and then I put it into ChatGPT, and it actually wrote up an AI profile for me. And so this is the blurb about Joe Applebaum. Joe Applebaum is the CEO of Ajax Union, a B2B digital marketing agency, blah, blah, blah. Joe Applebaum is also the CEO of Evergreen, a company that trains business professionals on how to use LinkedIn. And Joe Applebaum also created a software called Evy AI, E V Y A I. It helps professionals draft intelligent comments. And I basically gave it my history that I studied to be a rabbi in Israel. But after getting ordained, I got into business. And then my focus was technology and web development. I built hundreds of websites. And then I told it all about me. Now, if I take this about Joe Applebaum and all my hobbies and everything about me, and I copy it and I paste it into ChatGPT, and I tell it, act as a brainstorming tool and come up with five ideas, act as a brainstorming bot and come up with, I'm going to say three amazing ideas for Joe to post about on LinkedIn. And I'm not going to give it the rest of the information because I can, but I'm not going to. Um, and I just say, here is about Joe. 
and I paste in the information I got from my Google from my Google Doc, it's going to give me lots of really great information. The intersection of technology, spirituality, and personal growth. From studying to be a rabbi in Israel to reverse engineering algorithms as an ethical hacker. Do you see that? I can have it go and flesh out the whole post and I can it can give me these really nice content ideas about things that are specifically related to my story because I already have a blurb. Now, my question to you guys is, do you need to create a blurb for yourself or do you already have a detailed blurb like mine? Now, Dan, I went ahead and not only created a blurb about myself, I also created a blurb about Ajax Union, which is my digital marketing agency. I also created a blurb about Evergreen, which is my business training company, where we trained over a thousand clients on how to use LinkedIn and artificial intelligence. And I also created a blurb about my AI software called Evi AI. So I have blurbs about each business and about each person in my life that I want AI to know about. And these blurbs are not very big. If you take a look at how many words these blurb is, you press control shift C and you can see that I have 525 words. The AI can't read that many words because it's limited to how the input. So you don't wanna give it millions of words. You wanna give it a few hundred words, maybe under 4,000 characters at a time. If you give it under 4,000 characters, it can handle up to 4,000 tokens and the tokens are gonna get bigger and bigger over time. but no matter which tool you use, whether you're using Bard or whether you're using Claude or whether you're using ChatGPT, you need to feed it information first. So I'm not sure if this is helpful to you guys. Are you guys getting value? Just write value in the chat if you're getting value. I'm curious to know. Michelle asked, can you demonstrate how to feed AI the preliminary information before completing a task? I literally just showed you how to do that. I took the information from my Google Doc, I pasted it into ChatGPT after I wrote a prompt that said, act as a brainstorming bot and come up with three ideas for LinkedIn posts. And look at how many people are writing value. Thank you, thank you for blowing up this feed over here. Such an amazing story and path. What is the name, the interview tool you used? I used a tool called otter.ai, O-T-T-E-R.ai. I have, it's one of the few a transcription tool that have a mobile app. So when I go running, instead of talking to myself, I talk to Otter and Otter types everything up. ChatGPT writes up the questions. I answer the questions and Otter types up the answer. I then take those answers, the entire transcript, I throw it back into Google Bard or ChatGPT, and then I tell it to write summaries for me. And that's one of the things that I pride myself in teaching people how to do is to summarize information very, very quickly. So um, before we move on to the next uh, mini lesson, uh, Eldad Sotnik Yoga have asked, is it possible to back up a company page account versus a personal one? Currently, I would never saw the feature to do that. I haven't seen the feature to back up a company account. Um, but I'm sure if you search for it online, I've, I've never even been asked to back up a company account. Um, but I'm sure if you search for it online, there are tools that allow you to do that. I haven't seen it natively on LinkedIn, but if you hit me up privately, I can help you research it and find out the answer to that. You know, one, one of the things about LinkedIn is uh, it, it is a professional network. And so uh, I know, at least with, with BizHack, we put a lot more emphasis in my personal profile than the company page. Um, and the reason for that, and I can tell you the reason for that real quick now that we're, we're already getting into that, if you go onto the LinkedIn feed, you will notice that the posts that come up primarily, predominantly are from other people. Most people want to see content from other people. Now, if you want to pay to play, you can advertise and you can't advertise a profile. You can only advertise a company page. So in order to advertise on LinkedIn, you need to have a company page and you need to advertise posts on a company page or advertisements on LinkedIn. So you need to have a company page, but the profile is what's going to rank organically. So if you go through your feed and you look at the posts, the ones that are coming from company pages, nine out of 10 times, it says promoted on the top right corner of it. So they're reserving the spaces for company pages for promoted posts. So if you really want to get traction, my recommendation is to focus on your profile. Some people have popular company pages and they do really well, but for the most part, it's going to be about your profile. 
And, and that's actually a great segue into the topic of drafting posts. Um, you know, all social networks really are about human to human connection. And I think LinkedIn has kind of kept that top of mind more. Uh, there is still the opportunity to, without having to pay, getting seen by quite a few people, especially if the content you're creating is being engaged with. Uh, whereas with Facebook, it had largely become, and to an extent Instagram as well, kind of a pay to play platform. And I think increasingly with Facebook over the years, the difference between a personal profile and a company page started to get less and less clear. Whereas with LinkedIn, they really preserved that distinction. And, you know, I think all marketing in the end, uh, Joe is human to human. And so, um, especially if you're trying to do a relationship driven sale, which most of B2B is, uh, you really need to connect with people in that human way. And LinkedIn is a good platform for doing it. And one of the best avenues for doing that is, is a post. Uh, and a post is basically, um, well, t tell us, Joe, what is a post and then how you can leverage AI to, to create better and more posts. So one of the ways that you can get exposure on LinkedIn is by creating content on LinkedIn. A post is simply just content. So your profile has posts. It's almost like a blog. Your website can have content on it. You can have content on your website as a blog. So LinkedIn in 2016 enabled people to write articles on their on their um, on their LinkedIn uh, on their LinkedIn profiles, and then later, 2017, 2018, they started allowing people to blog or to create posts on their profile. And what enabled what happened at that point is it enabled people to stay top of mind with their network very very quickly. Initially, it was just text. Then they added images. Then they added video. Then they added polls. Now they have live. They have so many different things that you can do in LinkedIn as a post. So you can use artificial intelligence content writing tools like copy.ai or Jasper or anywhere.com. You can use all these tools to help you be able to write posts. Sure, you can also use ChatGPT. You can also use Bard to help you do that. But these tools give you templates specifically for LinkedIn posts that allow you to be able to quickly write posts with just a click of a button. So for example, you can give it a topic, explain how curiosity has driven businesses to new heights, inspiring other entrepreneurs to do the same. What you can do is you can tell copy.ai or Jasper this, uh, this prompt about what you want to write about, and then it'll just go ahead and write it for you. And then you can change the tone. There's a lot of things you can do. Now, one of the things that I like about copy.ai is that you can try it for free. That's number one. And number two is the second thing I like about it is that it also has a chat feature. So you can actually chat with it almost like chat GPT. I love the templates. And I also love that you can put in a LinkedIn URL and it'll actually read the LinkedIn profile. You can put it a website and it'll actually read the website. And it has a lot of copywriting methodologies in there like Ada and many other methodologies that you may not be a copywriter. You may not know all the copywriting methodologies that exist out there. So just logging into copy.ai, you'll get a lot of ideas for prompts that you can later use in ChatGPT as well. And I think it's worth mentioning, you know, copy.ai is uh, an example of one of just a proliferation of tools that are out there. And part of what Joe and I are here to do is help point you to the tools that we use and that we like, because we've tried a lot of them and some of them work better than others. Um, so uh, I don't know if you wanted to kind of walk us through uh, just the output um, that came from that topic prompt. Yeah, so the the, the uh, just looking at the output and what came out of this topic. Now, there are many other tools that you can use to do this, but if you take a look at the output, the output says has a hook on top. That's the first thing that comes up. It has a little introduction. Um, it also be it works on giving you some main points and then gives you like a summary with a call to action and it even gives you hashtags. So there are tools that are, that are integrated into LinkedIn where you could just click a button and it'll just write a post for you just off the off the bat inside LinkedIn. But this post you would have to if you're planning out, let's say, for example, a content calendar and you want to create a whole series of posts, you might want to do it inside copy.ai. One of the things that I really like about copy.ai is that copy.ai allows you to also include your team. So you can create projects and include your team. 
Now, one of the things that I'm showing you here, so let's say you use a tool to, that's integrated into LinkedIn that creates the post for you, and you don't want to waste time using another scheduling tool like Hootsuite or Buffer. You can click on that little wheel next to the word post. Do you see where I'm pointing the arrow to? And when you click on that little wheel, it'll allow you to schedule the post inside LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has integrated post scheduling. So you can write a series of five or 10 posts using AI and then schedule it for the future. So the next five or 10 weeks, you'll have posts going out automatically. So that's really powerful if you guys are using the scheduling on LinkedIn, really powerful tool. Perfect, thank you, Joe. So next we're gonna talk about drafting comments. So I guess the first question is, what is a comment in this in LinkedIn? So when somebody posts on LinkedIn, when somebody posts something on LinkedIn, you have the ability to like that post. And I'll, I'll log into LinkedIn right now and kind of show you that in real time. You have the ability to like a post and you have the ability to comment on a post as well. So if I go into LinkedIn and I'm just on the feed over here and a, a post will show up. You see Marie's post showed up. I scroll down, I see an ad. Um, I see a picture of myself. I see this person, Sigal Barnes posted something and she even commented on her own post. So you see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like this post. I can like the post. I'm engaging with the post when I like it. If I see Travis, he posted something over here about Olympic athletes, he liked it. Now, I wanna also leave a comment. There are only nine comments on this post. And if I leave a comment, not only will the author notice me, but all their, all their connections will notice me as well. A, a like, you don't really notice who liked because you're not gonna click on here to see who liked. But the comments you're gonna notice because a lot of the times people like to read comments. So if I click on this AI tool that we created called evi.ai and I change the goal, for example, provide value, and I change the tone, for example, make it informative, the tone informative, I press generate, It'll then read the post, send it with the API. So you don't have to log into ChatGPT. It'll send it using the API into ChatGPT and it'll give you an output. As an entrepreneur and former athlete myself, I couldn't agree more with your insights, Travis. The dedication, discipline, and competitive mindset developed through sports are invaluable in the business world. I played soccer growing up and the lesson that resonates with me most today is the importance of playing a long game. Building a successful business requires patience, persistence, and blah, blah, blah. Do you see that? I'm giving him a thing. I played soccer and I'm gonna say, and football, football growing up in yeshiva. You see? And the lessons that are, I would say, by the way, love the picture. Boom. Okay, and I'm gonna tag him. So this way he gets notified. You see, I, I click the ad sign and I press post. Now, if I had to write that comment myself, it would have taken me five minutes to write that comment. I have to think about what to say. I would spell check and edit and deal with the whole thing. But with AI, I just spent about five seconds generating the comment and about another five seconds editing it. And then I posted it and have a good day. I customized it. So there's no way for him to know that I actually used artificial intelligence to write this because artificial intelligence doesn't necessarily know that I went to yeshiva and that I played football and all that stuff. But and the fact that I wrote boom, and the fact that I tagged him, AI is not going to tag somebody. It doesn't know how to tag it. And so the way that I, I use this tool, and it saved all the information up here. So if you go into the recent activities, you can see, and by the way, when I sent um, Elizabeth an invitation, it typed out the invitation too. So you can see all the activity that I've done over here, and it actually saves your activity. That's one of the things that I love about these tools, that it can save activity. So commenting on LinkedIn is extremely beneficial. Now, there are many places to comment. You can comment, for example, if I want to comment on Dan's recent posts, I can go to Dan. I could look up his profile. And this is how you do this. A lot of people don't know how to do this. You click on Dan's profile. And I highly recommend you go through Dan's posts because Dan is posting all the time. He has really great content. So I would bookmark Dan's posts. And then on a daily basis, what I can do is I can scan through. And especially if I want to be top of mind with him, I would see all his posts. I can click down here, show all posts. And I can see last chance to join this thing, last chance to an incredible masterclass AI with LinkedIn. If you struggle writing content, begins in an hour. So I'm gonna give it a like, of course, because it's my own thing. And then I'm gonna give it a little uh, comment over here. I'm gonna change the tone to be more friendly. And I'm gonna hit generate. And as you can see, it reads the post 
and it, it'll write an entire thing. Hi, Dan. Thank you for sharing the masterclass. Joe, it's great to see the opportunity to learn content creation, blah, blah, blah. I appreciate the value session can bring to people. I've registered. I'm looking forward. I'm going to say to presenting. I'm looking forward to, pre to presenting and sharing insights. Okay. Thank you again for this valuable resource. Okay. So now I kind of modified it just a bit. I'm also tagging Dan over here. Now it didn't come up with his name, so I got to search for it. Uh, okay. I clicked on him and I pressed post and now it tagged him and it wrote this detailed post and I modified it a little bit. Remember what Dan said earlier, you have to read it and make sure that what it's saying is actually relevant and so I spent five seconds reading it, made a modification, and have a good day. Now, one of the one of the beauties about this is that if this if this comment is a really great comment, and I like the comment, I can take this comment and turn it into a post with one click. LinkedIn has a feature. Do you see the repost feature over here? I could click on repost, and I can lead the conversation by turning my comment into a post. So not only does it create comments for you, but because the comment is so meaty and so professional, I can then take that comment and repurpose it as a post and schedule it for later as well. So AI can really help you a tremendous amount and it can really help you grow your business. Now, of course, you have the ability to add, um, to add custom prompts inside the tool as well. So for example, if you want to um, chat GPT, if you want to comment about content related to ChatGPT. Let's say you were like me, you had an AI course and you click on posts and you're searching for comment related to ChatGPT, posts related to ChatGPT. Um, what you can do is you can search either a hashtag or something else, and then you can leave comments related to that. So for example, David Ho posted, I use ChatGPT, blah, blah, blah. So now I can click on comment and I can stay top of mind in the conversation with someone that I may not even be connected to, but is talking about a topic in my business That'll help me also stay top of mind. So I'm going to change this to more of a professional tone. I'm going to press generate. It's going to read Dan Ho's post on LinkedIn that he posted yesterday. Great job. Now it said, great job, Joe. So I'm going to say, make the comment uh, under 15 words. And it's written by Joe. Okay. Let me hit generate and see what it does. Impressive work, author name. <laughs> I messed it up. So imp impressive work, author name. So I'm going to fix that over here. For some reason, it didn't pick up the author name. It's not perfect. I'm going to write David. Your use of generative AI without coding is inspiring. Do you see that? It made it short, cute, and to the point. And I just did it like that. Um, so sometimes there are placeholders that AI will create. You just fill in those placeholders. Sometimes it'll actually pick it up, depending on the privacy settings of the person and what's available inside the actual page. But as you can see, if I wanted to promote my ChatGPT tool, I can just drop an unlimited amount of comments because the tool gives you the ability to leave unlimited comments. So that's extremely powerful and highly, highly recommended. And the more you customize it, the better your prompts, the better the tool will be. Now, you can also use Google Bard to create generic comments for you. So if you want to use Google Bard, you can say create 10 generic comments for me to use on LinkedIn posts. And you press enter and it'll create a bunch of generic comments for you that you can use and you can save those generic comments in a file so that later you can just use those generic comments quickly. So whether you want to create generic comments in your industry, whether you want to create customized comments, you can use AI tools to help you do that. Um, Susan said, evi.ai specifically uses on LinkedIn or other places. It specifically works for LinkedIn and it's eviai.com, not evi.ai. It's eviai.com, just FYI. Ross said, is there a threat that AI creation will drown people in content in the future? AI creation will create more content. More people will be using it. But I don't think that it's going to drown people with content it's going to take the content that people customize and it's going to make it more powerful and the garbage content that's going to be out there, people are going to learn to ignore. Just like you get 300 emails a day, 290 of them are spam. You learn to ignore those spam emails, right? You look at who wrote it and you look at the context right away in the subject line and you learn to quickly delete emails. By the way, how many emails are you guys getting a day? 
you're getting tons of garbage emails, right? I don't know about you, but I sometimes get 500 emails. So if you learn how to customize your posts and you use AI to draft it, use AI to brainstorm, use AI to research, use AI to strategize, you're going to use AI correctly. So the key is not to just spam. And most people are going to try to spam. It's not going to work and they're going to give up. People try to spam. It doesn't work. And then they give up. And so what I want you to do is use AI to draft it because it's much easier to edit than it is to write from scratch. Stephen King wrote a book called On Writing. Have you guys ever read On Writing? On Writing is a really great nonfiction book. He wrote many fiction books, one of the most popular fiction writers. He wrote a nonfiction book called On Writing. One of the things that he says is, he says, uh, writing is human. Editing is divine. So writing is human. It's never going to be perfect when you write, but when you edit it, it's going to be perfect. So if you just act like a human and grab AI content and post it, it's going to suck. Instead, if you want to sound divine, make sure to edit your content and make it sound like you. Make sure to edit your prompts and train the AI on how to make it sound more like you. And one of the things that I like to do with AI is say, use more simple language. Speak to a five-year-old, speak to a 10-year-old, because that's how humans speak. The philosophical AI language that it uses is usually way too philosophical for people and they know that it's AI. It's way too fancy. Lower down the fancy. Let's eat tacos. Let's go crazy. <laughs> uh, you're muted still, Dan, or something. It's, you're, the, the voice is not coming through, just FYI. Maybe sure, you're uh, th thank you for letting me know. Um, Let's talk now about replying to direct messages. I want to make sure we can get to all the topics we want to cover. So um, first of all, uh, talk about what is a direct message in the context of LinkedIn. And then uh, you're also talking about a new tool called Get Magical uh, that is exciting to hear more about. Yeah, so there are tools that allow you to inject direct messages and help you with your replies. So if you go on LinkedIn and you click on messages, you might get messages from people and you may not have time to reply or you may want to reply, but you don't know the right words to use. So you put in a sentence and it just doesn't sound right. And then you leave and you never reply to your prospect or to your potential client. So using a tool like Get Magical, you can actually save templates inside Get Magical or there's another tool called Briskine, B-R-I-S-K-I-N-E. Or you can use Evy AI to automatically generate DMs inside LinkedIn. Any of those tools that you use, it'll help you customize the direct messages, either with templates or using artificial intelligence. Get Magical actually reads the content and it replies. So does Evy AI. Briskine doesn't read the content. It just provides you with templates that you save inside your, inside your Google Chrome. So my recommendation is to consider using artificial intelligence to help you draft direct messages that will make it go faster and it'll sound much more professional. A lot of us need spell check. A lot of us not sure what, what to write in the DM. So if if you want, I'll, I'll just quickly show you. Um, if, if I go into my DM right now and the way that you do it is you go to the top of LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys are using DM, but DM is extremely powerful to book conversations on LinkedIn. So if you want to do business development, one of the most important things that you can do on LinkedIn is use direct messages. So I have lots of different messages. Rachel, for example, said, Joe, it's a pleasure to blah, blah, blah. She sent me this spam. I'm not going to reply to this. Um, but Elizabeth said, absolutely. It's great that the AI and I'm interested in signing up to your classes and additional training. That's lovely. So I want to reply to her, but I don't necessarily have time to sit down and write a reply. So I might use Get Magical. I might use Briskine or I might use Evy AI, and I'll literally just insert a comment. It says, thank you for your expressing interest in my comments. I'm thrilled to hear that you find them valuable. I believe they can provide additional training that you're seeking to ensure that you receive the most value from the classes. Could you please let me know which specific topics or areas you want to focus on? This will help me tailor the content to your needs. Looking forward to helping you further development. So I'm going to delete this because I don't want to bother Elizabeth with this. But as you can see, it wrote up a really nice direct message, and I'm going to take the meat of it, and I'm going to press send. And now Elizabeth has a really well-written direct message that took me about a second to write instead of it me sitting down and thinking about what to write um, and so on. So these tools are extremely useful. And using tools like Google Bard, you can actually save all these generic comments. You can ask it to create generic comments. And then you can put those into a tool like Briskine. So for example, if I want to um, reply to, let's say, for example, Shannon, Shannon asked me about my tool. 
I press control space bar. And now I have a bunch of different templates that I saved inside Briskine or Get Magical. And these templates I created with AI and it'll automatically do that. I click on this. I just want to say, I appreciate you very much. Thank you for being connected with me. Let me know how I could add value to your life. Wishing you amazing things. You see that? So I have lots of different templates that I created based on different scenarios. And depending on the type of business and the type of scenario and what you have going on, I would consider creating those templates to make it much easier for you to be able to send direct messages. And, um, you know, a direct message is uh, very similar to, uh, you know, essentially an email uh, inside of LinkedIn for those of you who are newer to the platform. And so, you know, we've talked about like different types of content creation so far. Uh, we've talked about creating posts, which are like uh, blog posts. We've talked about comments, which is responses to other people's posts. And now we've talked about DMs. There's another kind of content that is incredibly important. It's one of the main pieces of currency uh, inside of LinkedIn. And, and that is giving recommendations. Now, I would say this is kind of the, 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 the coin to the realm, the, the social juice. Um, for those people whom you've worked with, um, giving a recommendation and receiving a recommendation is incredibly powerful. Just like we go to Yelp or Google reviews to look at the whether we want to work with a restaurant. Um, when you're in a B2B space and you're looking to do business with someone, those reviews matter a lot. And goodness, if you happen to have a connection, a personal connection with one of those reviewers, you can then call that person and ask them to tell you a little bit more about Joe. So um, what I would say is giving and receiving reviews is one of the most important things you can do on LinkedIn and one of the uh, heaviest lifts. A lot of us don't do it as much as we should. So, so Joe, talk a little bit about um, how you can use AI to uh, draft reviews and, and maybe even potentially help um, draft a review someone can write on your behalf for them. So first of all, I have a question for the audience. How many recommendations do you currently have on LinkedIn? I want everyone to set a goal to get at least three new recommendations in 2023. Getting three recommendations in 2023 will help you have fresh recommendations because LinkedIn by default shows three recommendations on your profile. So if you have recommendations in 2018 or from 2008, it's not really going to be relevant to what's going on right now in your business. So commit to getting three more and put it in the chat how many you have, because a lot of people don't even know how many they have. Evy AI, and there are other tools that do this as well, help you create thoughtful recommendations for your LinkedIn connections. Now, one of the reasons why I like leaving recommendations for people is because when I leave a recommendation for somebody, they feel like they owe me something. They feel like I did something really nice for them. And one of the laws of influence is reciprocity. If you read the book called Influence, I don't know if you guys ever read that book. It's a really, really powerful book. That book talks about the different ways that you can influence people. And a way to influence somebody is by leaving them a thoughtful recommendation on LinkedIn. Another benefit that I get besides influencing you if I leave you a recommendation is that I also get real estate on your page. So if I leave you a recommendation, uh, and we can, I can show you some of the recommendations that I've left. If I share my screen, I can show you some of them that I left. Um, and you can see how powerful they are. It gives me real estate on somebody's page. And often that's the only recommendation they'll ever get. So if I, I can't leave Brian a recommendation, even though Brian's um, one of the members here that, that's on here live from Key Plus, he's a chief executive officer. I can send a connection request to Brian, um, but I can't leave him a recommendation because if I click the more button, the option for leaving a recommendation is not here. That's because he's not a first degree connection with me. You see, it's a second degree. You can't just randomly give people recommendations. You can only give recommendations to people that you're connected to. So if I'm connected to Elizabeth, for example, I could refresh the page. If she accepted my connection request, which I see she did, now what I can do is I can click on the more button over here and I can actually recommend Elizabeth. Now, I don't know much about Elizabeth, but from my small interactions with her, I see she's a generous person. She's really smart. She looks like she knows what she's doing. So I may want to leave a recommendation for her, maybe now or maybe in the future. So if I want to leave one, I click on recommend. And then I talk about our relationship. I say, um, she's either a client or I'm a client of hers. Or what, what is the relationship that we have over here? And then I select the position. For example, maybe attorney, maybe I want to leave a recommendation when she was a law student or whatever it is. 
And then I can draft the recommendation. Now, the problem is, is I'm not sure what to say. So using a tool like Evy AI, when you click on the little tool here, you select first the relationship. Let me see. You have to first select the relationship. You first select the relationship. So for example, Elizabeth was a client of mine. And then you select um, the position. And then you press Evy AI. It starts understanding what it is. So I'm going to say Elizabeth. I'm going to add the command. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Beth is generous. Okay, I'm going to write Elizabeth is generous and kind. I'm going to press generate. It's going to consider that. It's going to consider the relationship that I wrote. It's going to consider the position. And it's going to draft a highly detailed recommendation that some of it's going to be lies because it doesn't know exactly everything. So it's going to make some things up. So that's where I have to customize it and actually tell the truth because AI does hallucinate sometimes. And so it wrote up all this information over here. And I'm going to read this later and make sure that it actually makes sense. I'm not actually going to leave this now. I'm not going to edit it in front of you. But I can actually edit the entire recommendation. And I'm actually going to show you. I'm going to hit discard. I'm not going to actually leave this recommendation out. But I'm not going to, you can actually see all the recommendations that somebody left. So if you click on view profile, you can actually see someone's profile. You can scroll down. And you can take a look at what recommendations they received and what recommendations they got. So as you can see, I received quite a few recommendations on my profile. The last one that I got was August 4th. And by the way, any of you that are connected to me, if we're connected on LinkedIn, you can leave me a recommendation just like Paul and Meredith did August 4th. So if I scroll down, you can see I have 446 recommendations because a lot of people value the things that I do. And now that they can use artificial intelligence to write recommendation, it makes it much easier. But you can also see who I gave a recommendation to. So if I click on given, you can see that I gave David, Meredith, Paul, and 182 other people recommendations. And as you can see right over here, I'm going to scroll down a little bit lower. And you can see I gave Jocelyn, my, my landmark trainer. Anybody here has done uh, the landmark forum, very powerful personal development class. Uh, Miriam, one of my clients. Tanya, another client of mine and so on and so forth, and Nicole, and so on. So let's say, for example, I wanted to give Dan a recommendation because I wanted to, and by the way, I recommend all of you that are clients of BizHack or that appreciate what Dan's doing to go to his profile and spend two minutes, if you're connected to him, and write him a recommendation. Say how amazing he is. Dan's doing so much great work educating you guys and putting all this together. Why not leave a recommendation that he can later use on his course and that he can later promote further? So I'm going to click on more. I'm going to click on recommend. And I highly recommend Dan because I personally know Dan. I've seen everything he's done. I've seen his program. I think his program is fantastic. And I highly, highly recommend that everyone invest in it. Dan was a client of mine. You were a client of Dan. So I'm going to write, I was a client of Dan. I'm going to write, he was the founder and CEO of BizHack. And I'm going to, and I'm just going to allow it to generate on its own. And then I'll quickly customize it and show you how long it takes. So it's actually reading his post right now. It's reading our relationship. It's reading the position. I didn't enter a command. I can enter a command after, but in this case, I'm just not going to enter a command. I'm just going to have it just um, uh, recommend. I'm going to press insert over here. And it's going to say, highly recommend Dan for his exceptional expertise and AI tools, blah, blah, blah. As a founder and CEO of BizHack, had his major success in force within Miami's tech and marketing, showcased deep understanding of personal work. During my time as client of Dan, I consistently was impressed by his ability to empower business owners, blah, blah, blah. His courses and his private coaching not only teach technical skills, but blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to delete this first part over here because I don't really like the sentence here. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to say Dan's track record for success speaks for itself. He has helped numerous people achieve $200,000, undeniable. In addition to his role, I'm going to delete the in addition to his role stuff over here. And I'm going to say, I have no doubt Dan's passion, knowledge, and education make him the number one choice for AI, educa uh, AI and business education. Highly recommended by his stuff now. Okay. So highly recommended by his stuff now. Um, I'm going to make sure space here and I'm going to press send. And yes, it did take me 30 seconds to a minute to put this together. But if I had to write this on my own, it would have taken me, I kid you not, 15 to 20 minutes or 30 minutes even because I would have to think about what to say. And then I would have to start typing it up and then I would have to edit it. And after I go back and look at his profile and, and reference his information. So instead, it just took me a few seconds. Now, Dan still has to go into his profile and approve it in order for it to show up. 
So where is it going to show up? It's going to show up on his profile under recommendations. So you see August 19th, Jennifer left him a recommendation. Uh, but this was 2021. So I'm going to get real estate on Dan's profile as soon as he approves it. He, I'm going to get real estate on his profile and I'm going to do something good for Dan because I believe everything that I wrote over there. And it's a powerful, beautiful recommendation. So he has to go and approve it. And once it approves, I could refresh his page and it'll show up over here. Dan, what do you think about the recommendation? Did I lie over there or did I say the truth? <laughs> Click on show all pending and hit approve. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to show everybody where, where this shows up. So, you know, here's my profile. Um, and then just you scroll down to the uh, recommendations section. Um, and I got to say, you know, not as many received or, or given uh, as our friend. So congratulations on those numbers. I know how much uh, effort and work it takes to do that. And then I go into show all pending uh, and, and there is Joe. Um, now press and, add to profile and it'll go live on your profile and everyone can go to your profile later and actually read it. So if you guys want to read it, just go to Dan's profile. Mike just put a link for Dan's profile in the chat. So go read it. Now, the other thing I tell everyone to do, all of my clients, I tell you, take a screenshot of the recommendation that you received and then share that screenshot with the world as a post. So you can tell ChatGPT or copy.ai to write a post about the recommendation that you received, paste the recommendation in there, and it'll write a post about it, encouraging other people to get recommendations. And now you have a screenshot with the recommendation. Everybody will read it because you wrote a post about it. And then you have AI write the content for that post. It makes it very powerful. Fantastic. And thank you for the kind words. It's been, uh, you're a mensch, and it's been a pleasure working with you on all this. All right. Thank so. You. We're going to talk now about creating short videos. And um, everything we've talked about has really been about uh, text. And so this next section is really about the visual component of LinkedIn. Social media is so much about video. And so, uh, and LinkedIn has increasingly become about video like Facebook was before it. So, uh, talk a little bit about how you can use AI to create videos. Okay, so the way that you use AI to create videos is there's a particular, there's a lot of different tools that do this now, and there's more coming out. And we have a few tutorials inside our course on specifically how to use these particular tools. Um, but the one that I personally found very useful is called Opus.pro. Video is also very good, but Opus.pro is exceptionally good because it's one of the few tools that allow you to take any YouTube video. So you have a YouTube video on YouTube. You take the link, the URL to that YouTube video, and you copy that URL and you paste it into opus.pro. Then you click on create clips. What it will do is it will look at the entire video and it'll find the most viral parts of those videos. And then it will edit it down. It'll add captions. You know what captions are? You know when it shows um, the text of what the video says, but it'll do it Alex Hermosi style, which means it adds colors and it adds emojis and it adds um, emotion to it. And it'll take the best 30 to 60 second clips from that video and it'll make 10 for you. And it'll give it a virality score. It'll tell you which one is most likely to go viral. And then you can customize the video a little bit. You can edit the colors, you can edit the text, you can edit what it says. And then you just press save and you download the video. And then you can put it as an Instagram reel. You could put it as a LinkedIn short video. You can put it as a TikTok video, as a YouTube short. And this works exceptionally well with like, for example, a Zoom interviews. So I don't know if you guys get interviewed all the time. I personally get on like 100 podcasts every single year. People have me on their podcasts all the time because I share solid information that's actionable and people love having me talk to their audience. And so when I'm on a podcast, often that podcast will also go on YouTube. So, or I will get a copy of that video I can take that information from YouTube, paste it in here, and it'll just generate a bunch of clips. I take the best three clips, and then I post them on LinkedIn. And then I have AI write a post about it. So really, really powerful uh, tool that really, really helps me. Somebody said, Devorah just asked, do you cover this in your course, Joe? Yes, we have a tutorial on how to use Opus.pro um, and also a tutorial on how to use video as well. So we walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do it. Ryan said, we got introduced to using Pictory and video creation. I'd be interested to hearing the two versus Pictory. There's a very big difference because 
victory is not taking a YouTube video and cutting it up for you and editing it and making it an Alex Hermosi style. It's you're putting in a prompt and it's generating a video for you. Uh, it's very, very different than using a tool like this that will actually find the most viral parts of a video and edit it down for you. So the editing process is not perfect. I still sometimes need to cut the clip a little more or mess with the clip, but it helps me find the best parts of the of the video very quickly. Uh, Michelle said, I use video.ai frequently. Is there a big difference between vid and opus? Video.ai doesn't allow you to copy and paste a YouTube link from the last time that I saw it didn't allow you to do that versus opus.pro, you can now both upload and you could um, you could upload a video and you could also import a YouTube link, which I personally find makes it much easier for me to be able to edit videos. Um, are, Joe, are those tutorial videos available on your YouTube channel or where can folks find them? No, they're inside our course. So we have 20 so, uh, different tutorials. Um, if you go to newaicourse.com, you can find our course there. Um, and we have 20 separate tutorials there that walk you through how to use Otter, how to use Midjourney, how to use uh, runwayml.com, how to use copy.ai, how to use Jasper, how to use Opus Pro, how to use video, how do you use Dolly, how to use ChatGPT, comparing ChatGPT to Google Bard, all that stuff. I have many, many more. So I'm not going to get into every little detail of it because I want to make sure that I give you guys the max amount of value. But, you know, like if you guys are getting interviewed. By the way, what is the topic that you get interviewed on? In the chat, go ahead, put that in. I'm always curious to know, if I was going to interview you, what are you an expert on? I'm an expert on LinkedIn marketing. I'm an expert on artificial intelligence for business development. I'm an expert on B2B marketing. What are you an expert on? So Rosemary is an expert on public speaking, Teresa Mindset for Success, Certified B Corporations, Roberts at Domestic Manufacturing. Get people to interview you. Get them to interview you, use AI to write up the questions for you, get them to interview you, then use video or opus.pro to make clips and put those clips on LinkedIn. Very powerful. Um, Lynn said scuba diving uh, for beginners. By the way, I'm an open water, I'm a certified, I'm a PADI certified open water diver. Um, for those scuba divers here, Melissa said, me too. I used to be afraid of uh, of the ocean and now uh, and now I love, I love uh, diving. I love going in the water and diving. I went in Maui. I went diving in Maui before the fires. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you guys for interacting. Um, quick question from Eldad um, about emojis in LinkedIn. Um, I know emojis can work really, really well on other platforms. Uh, what's your opinion about emojis in LinkedIn? I believe that if you overuse emojis, people don't like it. LinkedIn is a professional social network. You don't want to overuse emojis. Emojis work really well on Facebook and Instagram. You want to use them with class and with tact. It, they do stand out. Emojis definitely stand out, especially in comments. They stand out, or especially in your hook. A lot of people are using emojis inside the hooks. I would, I would not use it all the time. Just use it with caution, because if you're using it too much, it looks a little childish or it looks too playful for LinkedIn. So I would use it, but don't overuse it. Perfect. So let's... um. One of the things is I want to talk about uh, ChatGPT uh, and Google Bard for strategy. So a lot of what we've been talking about has been very tactical. How do you create text of various forms? How do you create um, videos and some of the tools for doing that? But what is the right text? What is the right video? What is the right message? Who's the right audience? Those are questions that are like the meta questions that influence your activity. Because otherwise you're just creating a lot of noise. And even if it takes you 10 seconds instead of 10 minutes, it's still a waste of time if it's not. hundred percent, hundred percent. One of the first things that we teach people inside our course is we teach them how to create a strategy. So a strategy has three components. It has the plan, the people, and the promise. The plan is what is your goal? What do you like to achieve? The the people is who are you targeting? And the promise is what do you need to say to them in order to get them to buy, right? So using AI assistance like ChatGPT, Google Bard, Cloud, Pi.ai, and any of these tools, those assistants are essential to creating a LinkedIn strategy. It's essential because you're not going to be able to do this yourself. You're not a marketing strategist. Maybe some of you are, but even if you're a marketing strategist, using AI to help you craft your strategy will save you a ton of time. So what do you do? You can ask AI to help you identify your target market and even build out a search for you using your ideal client. So for example, 
What I would say is Joe Applebaum, CEO of Ajax Union, is creating a prospecting strategy for a sales navigator outreach for CROs that may be interested in his AI course in the U.S. Can you help think about what he should include in a sales navigator strategy? So it says define your ICP, your ideal client profile, create a lead list, save the leads and accounts, personalize your outreach. So it basically breaks down what my strategy should be. So if you guys want to see me chat with the AI about my strategy for, let's say, for example, Evy AI or Ajax Union, I could share my screen, get right into it and show you guys in real time how I create a strategy. By the way, if you guys are getting, if you guys can turn this into money at some point in your career, put a dollar sign or multiple dollar signs in the chat. I want you guys to make it rain for me. I want to see it rain right now. Go ahead and make it, make it rain. Make it rain, baby. All right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I love when it rains. I love singing in the rain. Okay. So let me share right now. All right. So as you can see, I have Google Bard open over here. I have ChatGPT open over here. I'm going to create, uh, I'm actually going to keep going over here. Um, what did I write over here? Act as a LinkedIn expert writer and create a LinkedIn post that has less than 2,000 words. Um, AI for LinkedIn. Okay, let's just see what happens over here, what it, what it writes. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is, the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to ask Cloud, Claude, I'm going to say, uh, please help me. For those who don't know, who's Claude? So Anthropic, um, which is a competitor to OpenAI, decided that OpenAI is doing things that are way too dangerous because of the Dan, do anything now, because ChatGPT, you can actually override its security features and you can tell it to build a bomb. You can tell it to do some crazy things. And so Anthropic said, this is too dangerous. We're going to create a safer version of artificial intelligence. Um, and the and one of the workers that worked, one of the uh, first employees of OpenAI, him and his sister decided to leave OpenAI and went and opened up Claude. That's what he did. And so he opened up his own chatbot. And the way that this chatbot works is you can actually upload um, PDFs, uh, TXT files, and CSV files. Like, for example, you can upload your book and you can chat with it. So it's, 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 like, it's just more conversational. And it's a little bit different. So I would recommend testing out Claude if you haven't used it before. I'm curious to know how many people have used it. Have you used it? Have you not used it? Do you want to use it? And so on. It's Claude.ai slash chats. Okay. So now I'm going to click, I'm going to say, create, please help me create a strategy for Joe Applebaum and his business, um, Ajax Union. Okay. So now I'm going to tell them a little bit about Ajax Union. I don't know if you guys remember, but I have a little bit about Joe Applebaum. I have a little bit about Ajax Union. So I'm going to copy and paste over here this information here. And I press enter and I'm going to press paste. So now it pasted all this text in here. It's going to say, here are some digital marketing strategy ideas for Joe Apple and Ajax Union. Leverage his expertise as a LinkedIn trainer, promote his books and speaking engagements, build an email list of prospects, optimize his uh, personal website for SEO, network with other thought leaders for Ajax Union, establish a content hub, develop targeted landing pages, for the 10 marketing, for example, 10 digital marketing strategies for Tofu, top of the funnel, conduct LinkedIn outreach, create case studies, invest in SEO, attend in-person networking events, and let me know if you want me to expand. Okay, I'm going to ask it now. Who is the best target market for Joe to go after, after on LinkedIn for Ajax Union? Okay, I misspelled LinkedIn, but it knows how to, it knows that I misspelled it. It's fine. Based on the information you provided, the target market would be B2B technology companies like SaaS, cloud computing, professional services like consulting firms, marketing agencies, and accounting services, financial, healthcare, manufacturing, engineering, HR, and corporate training. Do you see the way it broke it down? So now I'm going to go after specifically um, engineering. Uh, Joe would like to go after engineering companies. Can you help identify the best type of engineering firms, engineering firms to go after in the US. Okay, so I'm asking you to help me identify the best type of engineering firms, civil engineering firms, construction engineering firms, electrical engineering firms, environmental engineering firms, mechanical engineering firms, chemical engineering firms. So I'm gonna do construction engineering firms over here. Do you see that? So I'm going to do over here construction engineering firms. And I'm going to say Joe 
would like to target construction engineers. Can you help create an ICP for this target? Okay, now ICP stands for ideal client profile. So it's gonna create an ideal client profile for uh, this. Look at this. It doesn't get better than this, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it doesn't get better than this. So it's really breaking down the persona, the value proposition, the company profile. Now I can go in, in deeper and start creating messaging and so on. Um, I'm, we may be running out of time. So I just want to be respectful of everybody's time. I know, you know, some people are dropping off now, but as you can see, um, there's a lot more to teach here. There's a lot more information to learn. So uh, if you're interested in learning more, I'm always happy to, to share more information, to educate you more. But for the sake of time, I just wanted to give you a glimpse onto how to be able to use tools like this to be able to craft a strategy. So um, before we uh, move to some of the kind of wrap up, I want to make sure that folks know how to find and download and use the EBAI tool. So um, I know that that was one of the questions uh, from uh, Diane Mulligan. Uh, and so could you go ahead and um, just uh, do a quick screen share and show us where to find the EBAI extension and how to download it? Okay, so it's really simple. I put the link in the chat, but if you go to www. Um, www.evyai.com. That's evyai.com. You'll see a button that says Add EVAI to Chrome. Do you guys see that in the center here, this link? When you click on Add EVAI to Chrome, it'll take you to the Google Chrome store. But before you add it, you can scroll down to the bottom and you can actually watch the videos that are here, how to install it and how to use it. Okay, how to install it and how to use it. It basically walks you through how to do it. There's two videos there. But if you click on Add to Chrome, It'll show you a little button over here that says remove from Chrome or add to, if it's on Chrome, it'll say remove from Chrome. Otherwise it'll say add to Chrome. And once you add it to Chrome, on the top right corner here, you'll see a little puzzle sign in Chrome. Do you guys see the little puzzle sign I'm hovering over here? When you click on the puzzle sign, it'll show you all the extensions you have installed and you can click on the little pin box to pin it there. Once you pin it, it shows up on the top right corner here. And when you click on it, you can sign in to your account, you can sign in for free with Gmail or with your uh, with your business account. You can sign in, and once you sign in and you go to LinkedIn, then it'll start showing up in the various places in LinkedIn. So there are six things that you can do with this tool. Number one is you can write a post. So if you click on start a post over here, for those that wanna know, I can say, write a post about AI and LinkedIn. Okay, so I'm going to click on Evy AI over here. I'm going to press generate, and it's going to write a post about AI and LinkedIn. And it'll do it in a very professional manner using a hook, main points, call to action, and hashtags. It'll do, it'll do it in the way where I teach my students how to properly be able to do that. You see that? Exciting news. Did you know that AI is a revolutionized way to use LinkedIn? Blah, blah, blah. And it shows all the different things over here. And I can literally just press insert. You see that? I can delete this little rocket thing if I don't like it. Did you know that blah, 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 blah? And I can delete the little bottom over here where it says it's less than 2,000 characters. And I can schedule it. Do you see it says schedule for later here on the bottom? This is built into LinkedIn, 816. I'm going to schedule it for, let's say, 11 p.m. I press next. I press schedule. And now it's scheduled this entire post. Okay, so that I just showed you how to write a post and schedule it. If you want to leave a comment, click on the comment box. Because you installed Evy AI, there's a little purple icon next to the comment. I click on it. I choose my goal, my tone. I press generate. I can also enter a command if I want. Great post, Sarah. I completely agree that knowing oneself is living authentically, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to press insert. I'm going to press post. And now I just commented. If I want to send somebody, for example, a connection request, Let's say, for example, David Baker, I want to send him a connection request. I click the more button. I click connect. And then I can customize the connection request by clicking on the add a note feature. And if I want uh, the AI to write it, I just click on the AI button. I click generate. It'll generate a custom connection note. Hi, David. I came across your impressive profile as an author and advisor. Your expertise in entrepreneurship is inspiring. Are you open to connecting on LinkedIn? Joe Applebaum. Do you see that? That's a highly customized connection note, which makes it 10 times more likely that someone will accept the connection request if you customize it. And it just takes a second to do. 
Then I already showed you recommendations. You go to somebody's profile, you're connected to, you click more, you click recommend. And um, you can also customize your own, uh, optimize your own profile. So if you click on me and you click on view profile, and you go to your about section. If you guys don't have an about section, I highly recommend creating one. This will help your profile rank on Google big time. So you go to your about section, you click on the pencil next to your about section. And once you click on the pencil button, you're gonna see an Evy AI logo on the bottom right. And when you click on it, it'll take all the information in here and it'll rewrite it using best practices. It'll also insert keywords. It'll also insert uh, call to action and tons of other information. So you just click on Evy AI. It shows your profile optimization. You pro you optimize it, and boom, there you go. And now you have a profile that's optimized. So those are just something. And I showed you the DM already. So those are just the six things that you can do with Evy AI. And if you do those things, you know you'll be able to be leveraging LinkedIn much better. And um, you know I had uh, uninstalled the Chrome extension, so I just wanted to show people quickly how easy it is. So you go to evyai.com. You go uh, add EVII to Chrome. Obviously, this is something you have to be in Chrome to do. You just click uh, add uh, extension. And now it's been added. And you can see it's right there. And if you want to pin it. You click on the puzzle piece to pin it. Click on the puzzle piece. You click pin. And now it shows up pin. there. And then you can click on it. Uh, it logs me now in. Now it only reads it only reads LinkedIn. So when you click on it for the first time, it'll take you to LinkedIn, and there you go. Boom! There it's right there. So oh, you just have to log in. You can sign in with with Gmail, or you can sign in with your username and password. If you don't have a Gmail, in the top right corner it says register. You can register, and once you sign in, you get ten thousand credits for free. It doesn't cost anything to use the ten thousand credits, and if you want unlimited content, we're offering a special deal for you guys. So you just click on the premium option, and you'll get a special deal. For that we're offering right now um, for unlimited content. All the AI tools that I know of don't offer unlimited content, but I'm willing to offer the first couple of people that sign up unlimited comments, unlimited posts, unlimited DMs, and so on. Um, I'm not looking to necessarily make money off this tool. I really want to help a million people be able to leverage LinkedIn much better. Right now, we have 630 clients using the software. And hopefully after you guys try it out and spread the word, we'll get to a thousand in the next month. 631 actually. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk very quickly about LinkedIn for recruiting um, because we don't wanna ignore that topic completely and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, so LinkedIn is developing built-in AI tools to help you create job descriptions for your job posts. So if you ever created a job post on LinkedIn, now what you can do is you can use ChatGPT to help you write the job descriptions, or you can use it within LinkedIn. I don't like the ones that LinkedIn has built in because it doesn't allow you to customize the prompt. It just basically gives you a, a description. The same thing with any other tools that LinkedIn is going to give you. It's not going to give you the ability to customize prompts or to customize the text that you have over there. Um, so it's really easy to, to use artificial intelligence to create job descriptions in ChatGPT. Uh, but if, if, if you want to be able to find people, you can also draft personalized AI messages right built into LinkedIn. So if you're using LinkedIn Recruiter, they built in the ability for you to send messages to people based on who they are and uh, completely redraft the information um, and it just makes it so easier. So if you're a recruiter, you can use it for job posts, and you could use it for sending messages to uh, prospects um, that you want to hire. Really, really powerful tools. And, and you know, I think this is um, again, this is LinkedIn started here for a couple of reasons. This is kind of their main money maker. Uh, they're also competing with other uh, recruiting uh, platforms that are leveraging AI in a big way. Um, but I would I would expect that a lot some of the functionality that uh, EVAI is incorporating into the marketing and sales uh, is going we're going to start seeing those over the next couple of uh, months and years uh, emerge in LinkedIn itself. Um, but uh, you know, uh, really exciting times. Uh, you know, a lot of what you've described. Uh, we have uh, a whole course kind of teaching folks how to do, uh, but the speed, the quality, the ease with which your tool and tools like yours are, are allowing folks to do it is just, it's, frankly, it's breathtaking. Thank you for your contributions and for sharing that with us. So this is a class, got a little bit of homework. 
uh, there's a part one and a part two. Uh, so uh, why don't you walk us through part one and part two? And then um, I'd actually love for you to take just a few minutes and, and help people just get started. I know you've thrown a lot of information. This is the moment where the rubber hits the road. And, and uh, so Joe's going to show you uh, what the assignment is, and then he'll do a quick demo on how to, how to begin the assignment quickly uh, on your uh, own site. So uh, part number one is very simple. If you're using a computer and you have Google Chrome, you have to be using Google Chrome and a computer. You go to eviai.com and you, just like Dan showed you, you install it, you pin it, and then you sign up for the program. And then you go to the LinkedIn feed, linkedin.com, and you start leaving comments. Leave comments on just 10 posts just to understand how the tool does, how the tool does it. Change the tone, change the goal, customize it. You want to write it in a different language? Say, in the command prompt, say, write the comment in Spanish. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Part two is connect with Dan or connect with me on LinkedIn and leave us a recommendation. It's really easy for you to leave me and Dan a recommendation because you already got value from this presentation. So it would be really nice for you to take a moment and use Evy AI to write up a recommendation for me and Dan. Now, alternatively, you can use ChatGPT, but then you're gonna have to be copying and pasting and training the AI tool and writing up prompts and so on. It's not gonna come out right. So my recommendation is using this tool because we already have all the prompts built into the tool. So I'm going to just quickly show you how to leave comments on LinkedIn. So real quick, um, we're going to do a quick run through guide on how to do this, both how to do comments and how to make recommendations. OK, so let me quickly just do that right now, a quick run through on how to do it. So if you go to the feed, once you have a Evy AI installed, you literally just go to the feed on LinkedIn. You're going to see people are writing posts on LinkedIn. For example, Alex Hermosi. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. He wrote a book called $100 Million Offers. Now he just wrote a new book called $100 Million Leads, the second launch. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to leave him a comment. It's only going to take me about five seconds to generate the comment. One, two, three, four, five. Great insight, Alex. I particularly resonate with the pain points of authenticity, blah, blah, blah. I appreciate your emphasis on blah, blah, blah. I press insert and I press post. And I just left a comment on this guy who has millions of followers. Now I'm going to see Mark. Mark's a client of mine. I'm going to go to Mark. I want to stay top of mind. He just referred me to a very large $300 million engineering firm, and they're potentially going to be spending a few hundred thousand dollars a year with us. I'm going to press Great Insights, Mark. I completely agree that focusing on the crucial 20%, blah, blah, blah. We can streamline, blah, 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 blah. Insert. You see that? It, added, it even added hashtags. I press Post, and now I did two. That's the second one. I go by, and I see Josh Ringel. I'm not going to comment on him. I see Bonita. Bonita is part of my networking group, my JVMM, the Joint Venture Mastermind Networking Group. I press generate, and now it's going to read her post. It's going to write a comment. And hi, Bonita. Thank you for sharing these posts. Instead of writing this, I'm going to say write the comment in Spanish, just to kind of show you. I told you I would show you. I press regenerate. It'll write the comment in Spanish now. It's going to take just about five seconds. Hola, bonita. Me encantó. Okay, so for those of you that understand Spanish, now it's in Spanish. <laughs> I just wrote it in Spanish. Do you speak and Spanish? Do... Sí, en mi primer lengua. Ah, qué bien. Just so, yeah, my parents are my parents are both from South America. That makes me Hispanic. So same thing with Jenny. Jenny also is 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 she's from Spain. She lives in London, but she's from Spain. She's a LinkedIn trainer. She promotes Evy AI all the time. So I'm going to give her some love. I'm going to leave a comment. I'm actually going to tell it to write the comment in Spanish. I'm going to say, write the comment in Spanish and keep it uh, keep it under 25 words. Okay? I'm going to press generate. And you see, I'm writing the command in English, but excelente, blah, blah, blah. You see that? And I press generate, and it, boom, there you go. Thank you for, for sharing. Gracias por compartir. You see that? Um, and same thing with David Schnurman. David Schnurman actually moved to Barcelona. He was the president of Entrepreneurs Organization in New York. He was a forum member, a forum mate of mine. He was in my forum. Um, and I'm going to leave a comment in Spanish for him too. Um, create, create the comment in Spanish. I'm going to press regenerate. Um, and I could do it in German, I could do it in Russian, I can do it in Japanese, I can do it in any language, um, and it just works, you see? And I'm gonna press post, 
And now I just left him a um, an amazing comment over here and so on. Phenomenal. So this homework yeah. assignment doesn't have to take you forever. That's kind of part of the point. And then obviously the same thing can be done with the reviews uh, and, and generating comments in the reviews. Yeah, so the same thing um, with generating comments in the reviews. So like, for example, if I want to leave a review for Mike, um, I'm going to go to Mike's profile. Uh, Mike. Right here. Mike and I work together. Um, Mike was instrumental in making this uh, webinar happen. Me and him had multiple conversations. Really, really nice guy. Um, very, very cool guy. And it happens to be his birthday today. So if everyone could please wish Mike a happy birthday, um, highly recommend doing that in the chat. Go ahead. Let's wish him a happy birthday. I'm going to press recommend and I'm going to actually give him a birthday recommendation. Mike, thank you for having a birthday today. Thank you for being born. Um, okay. He hired me to do this webinar. So I'm going to say he was a client of mine. Thank you for allowing me to do this webinar today. Okay. Now I'm going to press um, generate. I'm going to say Mike was amazing at hosting me to do a webinar for his audience. He is a pro. Okay. Now I'm going to press generate. So I gave it a little bit of context of what to write about. Um, so it's going to consider what I gave it a context about, and it's going to write the recommendation based on the relationship, the position, and the context that I gave it. I'm going to press insert. Um, I highly recommend Mike Pace for his exceptional expertise in digital marketing to develop marketing strategies as a fractional CMO. During my experience with Mike, he showcased a proficiency in running intensive personalized courses, training, da da da, da ROS. Furthermore, Mike's mobility curriculum promoted students. I recommend da 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 da. I'm going to delete a few of these things over here. Mike made a significant contribution to marketing consultant, rapport, blah, 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 creating training. I'm just going to delete. Oh, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete some more of this. I'm going to delete the in addition because that's too much. Expertise is making, I don't know, make him the perfect. Uh, he helped grow. Okay, send. I just sent him a beautiful recommendation and that gets me real estate on his profile. Now I'm going to click on message and I'm going to wish him a happy birthday. Oh, look at that. I already did that. At what time? At 7.35 a.m. Mm -hmm. Michael, happy birthday. Today's August 16th, a special day. Sending you blessings and love and wishing you all the best. If you share a blessing with me too, it's special to do that on your birthday. Thanks. <laughs> Sending you blessings. I'm going to write, ah, uh, thank you. Do you see that? I do that to all of my connections. So have artificial intelligence help you write messages for people using artificial intelligence. That'll save you a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. Melissa said, thank you. Need to drop. Appreciate all the valuable info. Lynn said, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. How many happy birthdays did we get here? Oh my gosh, so many. Um, any other questions? So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I really appreciate everybody showing up. Uh, Dan, take it away and wrap it up like a falafel wrap. <laughs> All right, let's put this into a pita. So first is, you know, I want to just really quickly remind us on the learning journey we've been on uh, here today with Joe. So first of all, we talked about what is LinkedIn. It's a professional networking. It's great for recruiting and hiring. It's also incredibly good for developing professional relationships and for business development and sales. Uh, want to start by backing up your account. Um, remember that um, Microsoft is the owner of LinkedIn. Uh, it's about one third the size of Facebook, but it has more millionaires than any other network. And so they have a lot vested in protecting the network and they can be pretty quick on banning you from it if you're not careful. You want to make sure that at least uh, once a quarter, I would say you're backing up your account if you're very active, like Joe and I, maybe once a month. Um, automated sequences are just the flows of emails that you send to a new contact, um, telling them about yourself, telling them about your values, telling them about your business. And you can generate uh, automated sequences using some of the tools we talked about. And then there are all sorts of different ways to create leveraging tools like the EVAI tool 
content, text, for posts, for comments, for DMs, for recommendations. And then finally, you absolutely want to incorporate video. Uh, it is essential. And so taking bite-sized chunks of videos from longer webinars like this is one great strategy. You can post it on LinkedIn and then repost it on TikTok, Reels, uh, Instagram, Threads, um, in a variety of different platforms. But really, the, the current currency in social media is micro video, short one minute or shorter videos, TikTok style. And then finally, uh, you can use uh, AI to help develop a strategy for your B2B uh, outreach and to recruit and hire um, great staff, uh, which is always incredibly important. A, a lot of these are just general best practices that are basically turbocharged and accelerated. Uh, work that might have taken you half a day, you can accomplish in, in half an hour. And that's really uh, what the kind of thrust is here is the more human to human connections you can make, the more opportunities uh, you, you uh, will surface and the more likely the, that when somebody needs your product or service, you will be at top of mind. So, um, Joe, what was an aha for you today as you were presenting? Something that kind of really struck you uh, just as you were talking through uh, all of these tools and techniques. So for me, my aha was when you said that eventually LinkedIn is going to be integrating everything into, you know, AI into the whole workflow of LinkedIn. What I realized is that because Microsoft owns LinkedIn, my aha is that everything that they do is going to break. LinkedIn constantly breaks. So they don't give you the ability to put in prompts because if they did allow you to put in prompts, you would do what you do with ChatGPT and LinkedIn would get a really bad rap and LinkedIn's very into security. People would be writing things that are inappropriate on LinkedIn using their AI and they would take snapshots of that. So it's really, really, um, they have to be really careful with generative AI on LinkedIn because it's a professional setting. And if anyone does something unprofessional, they can get sued for harassment on comments and things like that. And so- I doubt that they're actually going to go ahead and allow people outside of like the private recruiting space and the private sales navigator space that they're going to just allow people to leave comments with AI or to write posts with AI and so on. I see that they're already uh, allowing people to start writing posts, but the posts are total garbage that come out of it um, compared to the posts that come out of Evie AI, where we worked really hard on creating really good prompts and also reading their profiles and also adding Eventually, we're going to be adding personas and so on. So my big aha is that even though you're going to be able to use AI tools built into LinkedIn, it's never going to really be customized, and they're never really going to allow you to shift it and change it to really represent your business in a meaningful way. So get the tools that are out there, the ones that we mentioned, like copy.ai, like Jasper, like Opus Pro. Use those tools to help you. Use Otter. Use ChatGPT. Use Google Bard. Use Cloud by, by Anthropic. Use these tools because they'll help you significantly grow your business. And if you want to have a tool that integrates into LinkedIn, then you should definitely try out our LinkedIn Chrome extension, Evie AI. I love that. My, my big aha, I think, is that, um, you know, just get started using these tools um, to do the things that you know you should be doing, but generally don't have the time or motivation to do. It kind of lowers the activation energy required for you uh, to get started. And uh, I love what you had to say about um, some of the risks for a company like Microsoft of integrating generative AI in such a seamless way. Uh, hadn't considered that. I love that thought. Thank you for that. Uh, we don't want to ignore the incredible raffle winner. Joe was generous enough to give a free $499 seat in his AI course. And the winner is Ingrid Christensen of InkGo uh, International. Uh, Ingrid will be in touch with your uh, information about how to redeem your prize. Um, uh, Joe, uh, I hope you uh, enjoy uh, your new client, courtesy uh, of BizHack, and, and that you have a really fruitful relationship with Ingrid. Finally, a uh, parting thought, I uh, got to uh, pull something from the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. He said that AI is the defining technology of our times. AI and machine learning is being infused into every experience in a deep way. Uh, no better example of that than what we talked about today in the platform that Microsoft owns, LinkedIn. So thank you again to all of you uh, for sticking around. Um, Joe, for all of your insights, your generosity, thank you for the re uh, recommendation, and I look forward to reciprocating with you soon. And Thanks, happy everybody. birthday to Mike.
Happy Definitely. birthday, Mike. Thank you for everything. Mike's the, the guy behind the scenes who makes this all happen, along with John uh, Valencia on my team. And I um, I want to also say in two weeks, bye, Mike, uh, in two weeks, we'll be back to talk about fact-checking and how to fight some of the stuff that AI makes up. And then in two more weeks after that, to give you guys a chance to feature some of your case studies, how you're using this in your business. Take care, everybody. Thanks again, Joe. Happy Thank birthday, you. Mike. Talk soon, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks.